What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on Buy Sell Cars TV. Today we've got something a little bit different, super interesting, 1996 Subaru Impreza Turbo 2000 and potentially a pro drive car. So a lot of things to investigate in this video. A little bit about this car. So it's a two owner car. Previous owner had this for the last 20 odd years, 34 services in the book. However, we don't have any paperwork other than a logbook, a service book and two keys. Yes, I guess that is the important things, but we don't have any paperwork to back things up. So that's something I'm planning on investigating later in the video. But for now, let me give you a walk around off this car. Super cool, potentially a pro drive. And you're going to see all of the parts on this car at the moment to make me think this is something to do with pro drive. So let's get on with the video now. Right. So let's start with a walkthrough on the exterior. And honestly, this car is in fantastic condition. I love the color of this. Green is definitely something which is beginning to come back. To me, this car looks like it's really been well looked after and maintained, potentially garaged or at least covered anyway, because the paintwork for a car of this age is looking 10 out of 10. And even just looking down the panels over here, you can see they look relatively straight with, you know, the odd few sort of car parking dinks, but the paintwork is looking fantastic. One of the first points I've picked up on when I got the car is the center cap. So you can see they say pro drive. Now, I guess anyone could put center caps on the car. So that doesn't necessarily mean the car is anything to do with pro drive, but it's a good start. Moving around the back, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So as we come over to the exhaust, we can see we've got a pro drive engraved logo on the rear silencer. Now that is something which is a positive. Again, I guess someone could buy that used and look to put it on. So can't verify anything just from seeing those points at the moment but it's a positive going down the passenger side of the car exactly the same situation it is looking 10 out of 10 there are again the odd little car parking dinks as you'd expect because this isn't a ferrari this isn't a lamborghini where people necessarily don't take this to the local shops this is an everyday usable car you can have the kids in the back so definitely a type of car back in the day which probably was used for the old tesco run but you get an idea of the current state of this car and for something which has come from 1996, I think this is looking absolutely fantastic. An unmodified, well looked after example of an Impreza. Let me show you the interior because that's where things get cool. And then moving to the interior. Now guys, I want you to take into consideration, this is the car as I bought it, uncleaned, unvalided, just how it would have been from when the last owner sold the car. And in all honesty, it is looking absolutely fantastic. Even the carpets, all of that's just come from me today, a little bit of wear. But in terms of the condition of the seats, look at them. They are looking absolutely fantastic. These Recaro seats, some of you viewers know exactly what these seats are about. Super, super rare Recaro seats. Bolster is looking in lovely conditions. And for me, I love these headrests. They are so cool. Not something which you see every day and then as we look over here what do we find we can see a carbon gear knob that is something related to pro drive along with the carbon on the center console we've got a lovely original subaru radio there as well which is not something you're going to see every day so the carbon on the gear knob the carbon on the center console and the carbon over here on the uh, side vents is related to pro drive along with that the recaro seats in here this is not standard on something from the subarus in the 96 that was all to do with pro drive so this is why i do potentially think this car has something to do with pro drive not sure if it's the one of 25 as it doesn't have the gold plaque but there is definitely some link with pro drive which i need to investigate and find out exactly what this car is but let me show you the rears as well yeah rears are looking nice as well i love the matching door cards that was all part of one of the pro drive packs back in the day getting the seats changed with the matching printing on the door cards to the seats. But those headrests from here look so cool. But you get an idea of the interior condition of the rears and over here looking at the front. For me, that is super, super cool. So 
So how does it drive? Well, it drives like an absolute dream. 1996 car, and it really doesn't feel like it's that old at all. I'm a small time classic car enthusiast, so you can say I'm in and out of old cars quite a lot, so I can get a good feel for when we've got a good one. And this is definitely that. The engine sounds great, the gearbox is fantastic. And that's another point to talk about, the short shifter, which is also something included on the Pro Drive car. So when you're changing gears, it just slots straight in. And that's the first thing I picked up on when I got this car. I put it into first gear and my initial thought was it hasn't gone into gear properly. And then I quickly realized, I think this has got a short shift fitted. So another positive in regards to the Pro Drive. The engine sounds very healthy. It seems to pull well, but I really do think that this car was owned by someone who was maybe a little bit elderly. And we'll come on to that in a second. In terms of the suspension and the steering, everything feels tight. There isn't any creaks or knocks coming from those components. And the type of car that this is, especially with the age, you know, they do get driven hard. They do get abused a little bit, shall I say. But I think this car is the opposite of that. Coming from long-term ownership and just looking at the overall condition of the car, I think this car has been driven very, very carefully, which is why the way this car is driving, in my eyes, is exceptional. So why did I buy this specific Subaru? What is it that stood out to me when I saw this car? The first few things which stood out to me about this car, it was a two owner car. And the last owner had the car since around 2002, 2003. So we're talking over 20 years of ownership. When I buy classic cars, I really like it when someone has had the car for a long time because there is a bit of a story behind it. You can potentially investigate and find out more details about that car if it's come from a long-term ownership. And that tells me that it, it was probably an enthusiast to own the car for someone to have kept it that long. So that was the first point which stood out to me. The next point was the service history. So this car was advertised with 34 services in the book. I think 15 of those were from main dealer. That was outstanding. When I saw that, I thought to myself, this is a car which has been well looked after throughout its whole life and probably owned by a more mature person. The reason I say that is because if someone has had this car for that long and they have still comprehensively serviced the car that many times, it gives you an idea of potentially what type of owner has had this car. Now I'm not saying your young guy who modifies his Subaru is not gonna service their car because of course they're an enthusiast, they still will but I was looking for something which was completely standard. And that leads on to the third point. It just looked like a completely standard Subaru Impreza Turbo 2000. Not something which you see every day. You know, it's the type of car people do like to modify. So it looked standard enough, apart from a few little things on the car, which in all honesty, I wasn't actually aware of. Being my first Subaru I bought, my knowledge was very little. When I saw this car pop up online, I didn't have a lot of time to do research. However, I did speak to a few people, looked online and I was aware pro drive cars are more sought after and are that little bit more special. So now fast forward 24 hours, I've bought the car, I've gone to collect it and I'm having a little look around it. Because I bought the car online, you're not seeing a crazy amount of detail in terms of things like the spec. And the same goes with the photos. So you get photos of the car, but you're not gonna get anything in detail to help me verify what is this car. So fast forward now 24 hours, gone to collect the car. First thing I've noticed when I've had a little look around the car is the ProDrive center caps. Some of you would have known this with looking straight at the wheels, but like I say, it's my first Subaru. I didn't have a crazy amount of knowledge on the car. So saw that I had the ProDrive stickers and I thought, let me have a good walk around of the car and see if I could pick on any other things. Now, what was the next thing I noticed? The ProDrive exhaust. When I saw that, I did get very happy because it made me think, Maybe this is a genuine car that was modified over at Banbury where ProDrive's you know, headquarters in England are. Then I sat inside the car. The seats look so nice, you know, Recaro seats with the design they have on them, with the matching door cards. It's just such a nice thing to see on this car. So, you know, sat in the car, saw all the carbon bits, and initially I didn't actually think anything off it at the time. Popped a bonnet open, I checked the water and I checked the oil. It looked absolutely fine. Got the car started heard like a kitten, sounded so good. Once I put the car into gear, I, like I mentioned, I quickly knew that this car's clearly got some sort of short shifter. All of these things at the time were making me question and think, this just doesn't feel like a normal Subaru. You know, I haven't had one before, so I can't compare it to anything, but I've got friends who've had Jap cars 
So I have a, a small amount of knowledge on them and it just made me think this isn't something which is standard, but because the car is unmodified, it made me think, could this have been a factory thing from new or maybe the car was sent for a conversion? So things were looking positive. So now I had about a 60 mile journey home and with the first couple of times where I did put my foot down, when I look in my rear view mirror, cause it was going a bit dark, you could see a bit of, you know, just dirty smoke or whatever you want to call it coming out the back. But now it's absolutely fine. Again, it just makes me think this car hadn't been abused, rarely been redlined, which is why there may have been a lot of gunk in the engine and the exhaust that got burnt out when I hammered it a bit. So all of these things to me were looking positive. You can't help but not put your foot down in a Subaru. That is the coolest thing I love about Subarus is the noise. I know you're probably not gonna pick up the sound very, very well. It's not a super loud exhaust, but many of you viewers probably know about Subarus and you know how they sound, but I've had some fast cars and even though this isn't anything crazy in terms of power, it still feels quick. So what's my plans with this car? Am I gonna keep it? Am I gonna sell it? You know, how am I gonna investigate to find out more information about this car? So I've got a bit of a bad habit of buying cars and then ending up keeping them. If you guys are early viewers of my channel, you'll remember I bought a Porsche uh, 911, 996 Carrera 2 manual. I bought that car to sell and I just ended up keeping the car for about two and a half years. I've sold that one now, so I need to make a video on that and talk about the cost, but I end up buying these cars. I've got a couple of old classic Mercedes as well. Again, you know, a lot of these cars, I bought them with intentions of selling and they're just very, very nice cars and you don't come across them often, especially when they've got fantastic service history or they're quite a rare car. So I end up holding on to them. So what I'm gonna do with this car, I don't know yet. I don't have a crazy amount of space to keep these cars, especially because they're cars of value. I like to keep them garaged or covered at home in the drive. And I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of running out of space. So it's becoming a little bit of a problem, but regardless of whether I keep it or sell it, I've got some plans with investigating things on this car. So the service book has services carried out from two Subaru garages from the early days on to about 2011. It was serviced like every six months as well for a long period of time. So I've got that in the book and the remainder is carried out at an independent garage. So that was from sort of 2011 up until 2023 or 24. So my plan is to see if I can get some paperwork for this car because it would be amazing to have a folder of some sort of work that's been carried out on this car. Obviously the important thing is I've got a service book stamped up which is evidence to say the car's been serviced throughout its life. So the first thing I'm gonna do is contact that garage to see if I can get hold of any paperwork for that car. It's not too far away, it's over in Surrey, so I can just make a little trip down there if need be. So I'm gonna get that done. Then I'm actually gonna to look to contact the owner who had this car for the last 20 odd years. Probably thinking to write them a letter uh, just to see if they have any other paperwork on this car and maybe if they can help me verify what the situation is on this car, you know, whether it's a pro drive or if, you know, that person modified the car when they had that car during their ownership. And just to know a little bit more about the car, you know, did they have any problems? What's the owner like? So I can just have a bit of a story on this car. Now, if things still don't work out with that, in the service history book, I've also got the original owner's details. Now, if I can't find any information out from the previous owner, I could then even look to just try and contact the original owner, the person who bought this car from new, because I guess that would be the person who could verify if this car was you know, done from factory or was it something which was carried out later by themselves or the following owner. So there is gonna be some investigating going on on this car. And I'm gonna make a separate video on that one because it's gonna be a long one where I'm probably gonna to have to do a bit of driving around, chasing people, chasing paperwork, and doing a bit of detective work to see what I can get on this car. So that's gonna be a part two video on this car. It's definitely well worth me doing it because if this car is a genuine pro drive, if it's a one-off 25, or is it something where a performance pack was put on at Banbury, or did someone just buy the parts for the car, it's well worth me knowing exactly the story on this car because it does affect the value. It makes a big difference to the value of the car. The one thing I'm yet to check is the ECU. So I've been told there's a little back plate under the carpet on the footwell. And if I remove that, you can see the ECU. And if it is a genuine pro drive car, there should be a sticker on there with some details, etc. So 
I'm going to get that done at some point this week. But other than that, guys, I think that's going to be part one for this video. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this car and catch up with you guys once we do a bit more investigating on this car. So on that note, I'm going to end this one here. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'm going to see you on the next one. Take care, guys.